Hello and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. This is where I give regular roundups of all of my knitting and crochet and creative crafty endeavours for the last few weeks. My name is Ali. I live in the very southeast of England in the county of Kent with my husband and my two daughters who are just on their way out the door downstairs. I can hear them clicking about and putting shoes on and opening doors. They're going off for an eye test, all three of them this morning. Did I say it's Sunday? It's Sunday. Uh, so uh, you can find me on Ravelry Instagram, uh, uh, Ravelry and Instagram are Starry Eyes Alley. And I also have another channel called This Little Wonderful Life, which is a vlog channel all about my daily life here in the UK and my love of walking and uh, my struggles with summer seasonal affective disorder and just run of the mill daily life stuff as well if you would like to go and watch that and all of the show notes for everything I talk about are in the description box along with links to patterns and all of that and I also put chapters in so you can jump about if you need to find anything I spoke about later on. I think that's it to introduce it. It's I'll say this now, it's really hot today. It's gonna to be about 29 degrees. It's not hot in here at the moment. I've had all the windows open and the sun won't hit this room until after midday. I've shut all the windows because there's a lot of people at home today. There's lots of people going past with noisy barking dogs and so on. Um, so we'll probably get a bit of background noise, but hopefully. Hopefully not too much. And yeah, thanks for being here with me. And thank you for all the love on my last couple of videos. It's been really, I, I'm still not worked my way through all of the comments for my last podcast. And particularly on my video before that, I did a tutorial about like really simple bag sewing. And it went a bit bananas. I think it must've got picked up in the, the YouTube algorithm wave and carried on because it's had more views than I've ever had before. So I'm still working through all of those lovely comments and I'm just so happy that people found it useful and something they could like relate to and, and inspire them. And that was just the best feeling. It, it is the best feeling. So thank you so much um, for, for the reactions to those videos. Uh, yeah, I've got anything else to say. I'm just, I'm not on the tea because it's so hot. So I've got squash which is like um cordial sugar free mixed with fizzy water it feels a bit like a cocktail it's orange and mango and i've got my obviously glass straw so that's what i'm having for my sunday morning drink i just can't face uh, i've had i've had a cup of tea but i can't face any more because it's too warm i'm in a very strange mood a bit of a rambly mood in case you hadn't picked up on that I'm not sure where this podcast is going to go. I've made very little progress on things and I've done very little preparation. So let's see what happens. <laughs> I do have one finished thing though. So let's start with finished objects and that is the Prom Queen socks. So I've wedged underneath my tripod. Now they're looking a bit worse for wear already because I finished them and gave them straight to my daughter because these were for my 16 year old daughter who had her prom last week and she has been wearing them around the house non-stop uh, so they've now gone a bit baggy. She keeps folding them over. So but however she wants to wear them is fine with me. So this is they, and they look amazing. It's such a lovely pattern. It's by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Hang on, let's do some folk. Oh, there we go. Uh, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. Uh, it's the Prom Queen Socks pattern, and the yarn is... I'll see if I can find the ball band. Oh, I think I've stuck it into my, yes, I have. I stuck it into my little notebook that I keep for when I'm making socks. It is the Curated Yarn Company. It's their platinum sock and the color is that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it was a gift from uh, Nikki at the Sheep and Cheerful podcast. And I, it was because I was nominated by a lovely viewer of both of our podcasts called Heather. Hi, Heather. And uh, I was nominated to go into a drawer for a prize and I got a gorgeous bag and some yarn. Uh, so I've made the Prom Queen socks because they were perfect um, for the colour of my daughter's dress. Actually, let me put up some pictures. I'll put up some pictures of her wearing the socks with her prom shoes. And also a picture of her in her dress so you can see what it looked like. Uh, she had a really, really lovely time. And yeah, she, she lost her voice. And she did survive in the shoes for the whole evening, which was impressive. But I've got all of this left. I haven't actually weighed it. But I think it's just under half a 
the skein of yarn there. Somebody said that everyone else says skein and I say skein. Is it skein or skein or does it not matter? Is it like a scone or scone thing? Is it just personal preference? I just always think, I've always said skein, or maybe it's because my mum says skein. Is it, if you're in Scotland, do you say skein or skein? Because my mum's Scottish. Where have I got that from? I don't know if I can get out of that habit now. Anyway, I've got about half left of a skein or scone. No, skein or skein. <laughs> I want a scone now. Oh, nice scone, but without the dried fruit. Yeah, so anyway, I digress. This is what I've got left of the beautiful curated yarn company yarn. So I reckon I've got plenty there for a pair of shorty socks um, or just full blown socks if I do contrast something or other. Maybe contrast, a little bit of contrast at the top and then a contrast toe. I don't really like doing contrast heels anymore. It kind of, I don't know, I, I prefer to just stick with the yarn I'm making. It started off in one knitting bag, this project, and then I moved it to one of the ones I made in the bag tutorial that I mentioned. And that was purely because we were going somewhere and I wanted to take it with me to work on. And the bag I was using is covered in some of my favorite enamel pins. And I didn't want to risk losing any of them, so I quickly shoved it into this little zip bag, which also fit really well into my rucksack, so I could take it with me when I was knitting on the go. So, And I've really enjoyed using this little bag. I was going to give it away, but I think I'm going to keep it for me. So it's all been living in there, and that is the Prom Queen socks. That's my one finished object. I'm going to take them off this, these blockers and give them back to Lilia now. Yeah? So in terms of works in progress, I haven't made much progress, but the thing I've been really steaming ahead with is my corner to corner crochet blanket because it's now, it's got to the point now where I'm decreasing, so it's getting quicker to work on. So that's quite motivating, but also it has been years in the making and I want to get it done. So it's living in my fabulous, bag by Hannah of the Hannah from Sheep's Alley podcast. We did a swap a long time ago and she sent me one of her classic Hannah bags. And I've got another bag in here that's full of minis. I've got my hook. I am using this. I can't remember the name of the person I bought this from, but she doesn't make them anymore and she doesn't sell anymore. She used to dye yarn. It's 3.5 millimeter hook and it's um, a polymer Kai one. It's really lovely and cool and smooth to hold. So I really like working with polymer clay hooks. So that's 3.5 millimeters. I'm using fingering weight or four ply weight yarn. And I'm using all kinds of minis that I've been given or I've been saved up or bought over the years. And what I'm gonna do, cause it's gonna be really awkward to show you, I'm making a rectangle shape blanket. So I'm going to lay it out and take a little film of it and put it over while I'm talking uh, so you can get an idea of the shape of where I am. Uh, so as you can see, it is getting narrower and narrower now. My, my rows are getting shorter and shorter as I close the final corner. So that's really good. And I feel like I'm so close to the finish line now that I, it's really motivating me to work on it. It is such a slow project for the size that it is. I mean, that's the short edge there. Ooh, let's hold it like this. So it's not massive. It's not a massive blanket. It's a lap blanket and it has taken me, oh my goodness, I think I've been working on this for over five years. Uh, it's all single crochet, um, US single crochet, UK double crochet stitches uh, in fingering weight yarn and that is, Quite possibly the slowest way to make anything I think isn't it so I'm not sure what possessed me to make a blanket if I love the the texture I love the drape I love the, the way it works with um, the hand dyed yarn but if I was to use this sort of pattern or technique again I would probably make something small like a headband or a cushion cover or something very small and definitely not a blanket. I would not recommend making a blanket in this stitch because it, well, unless you've got really good motivation and lots of time, or you don't mind working on something for years, uh, because it's taken me forever 
But I love it. I love how all these yarns are blending together and it's got so many memories in it. I really love this one that I used. Um, this, this one that's kind of red and pink and blue. That's a mini from Little French Meadow. They don't dye anymore. And I really like that. I like those colours. They're kind of festive. Or they could also be like a Kath Kidston type vibe, couldn't they? I also like this one with the luminous colours. I really like that. Yeah, so there's a lot of lovely yarns in here, lots of lovely colours, lots of memories. I really, really like it and I've really been powering away with this. So I'm hoping by next time um, the, the rectangle will be complete to show you and then I'll be considering what to do for a border. I definitely want to add a border. I just need to make decisions on colours and how I want to do that. Um, so hopefully that will be what I speak about in the next podcast. All right, let's get all this back in. I will not forget to put the hook back in. That's what I usually do. Um, get all this back in. So that is my work in progress that has seen the most progress since I last spoke to you. And then I've also been making progress on Lily and my daughter's birthday present dress, which is now three and a half months overdue. Her birthday was the 31st of March. <laughs> uh, it's living in this lovely big bag, uh, which was part of a swap I did years ago now with uh, Marta. And it's done me well for these big projects. And Apologies if I'm showing you the same thing over and over every episode at the moment. I have transitioned to a new colour. This is the Mystique dress. It is a pattern by Hook Loops and I'll link, I'll link the pattern underneath. Oh, let me just make sure I've got this the right way round. Yeah. And my daughter saw on Instagram a version of the dress. It's also a top. You can make it as a top or you can keep going to make it long to become a dress. And she wants a dress version. I mean, it's not gonna be a long dress. It's gonna be a short one. But she was in, uh, she saw a version made by, I got this wrong last time, the Silver Knot or the Silver, yeah, the Silver Knot um, on Instagram where she used these kind of colors. She had this pale peach into a pale sort of purpley pink. So that's what I'm doing. And I've now finally reached the purple section. I kind of zoomed in to sort of count how many rows she'd done, although I think she's used thicker yarn. So the purple I will now work until it is completely um, long enough. And it'll probably come sort of mid thigh for her. She'll wear something underneath it. Uh, yeah, so this is good progress. I've done the straps, which are nice and long, but I can still add to them if I need to. And the whole thing is gonna have um, an uh, an outline? No, a kind of border, a, a pale cream or white border, which will go around the straps and uh, the the cups at the top here. I can't quite remember where it goes. I don't. Yeah, and I think it goes around the back as well, and it forms uh, little bits where you can thread through the straps. It'll all make sense when it's finished. I'm sure Lilia will model it beautifully, so I can show you. But this is such. A fun thing to work on. I've never made anything like it. I, I'm loving doing it. It's really interesting. I would definitely want to make more crochet dresses. And the yarn I'm using is Schaffenmeyer Catania. Uh, they come in 50 grams balls of 125 meters. So I, th I think, hang on, so that makes 250 meters in 100 grams. So that's DK, isn't it? DK or sport weight? I'm not sure. I probably said in previous podcasts and completely forgot, but Shaka Maya Catania is the on. There we go. So not much to report on that, uh, and I really do need to get it finished. It'd be nice if she can have it to wear over summer. We're going. We booked our holiday for summer, actually. It took us a long time because we weren't sure what to do with the chickens, but we've now secured... We've got chickens in our back garden, if you don't know. But we've now secured a pet sitter for the week and my mum's going to help and as well and we've also got a automatic door closer and opener which makes life so much easier so we were able to book to go away for a week knowing that the chickens were going to be happy whilst we were away and we have booked 
to go. We're staying in the UK and we are going to go to Lancashire. We're staying just south of the forest of Boland. Uh, so we're about half an hour from Blackpool. So we have booked to go for afternoon tea at the Blackpool Tower Ballroom. So have I got my, oh, here we go. <sighs> Home of Strictly Come Dancing. They go to Blackpool every year, although they haven't done it for a couple of years, have they, because of COVID. But uh, yeah, so it will inspire me for the next round of the Strictly Sock Along, I'm sure. I'll have to bring some of my Strictly socks to wear in the Strictly Tower Ballroom. So we are going there. We're about an hour from Liverpool and my husband, Dan, is a big Liverpool Football Club supporter. So we are gonna go and do a tour of Anfield as well. And Lilia, my eldest daughter, loves the Beatles. So we're gonna go and see what we can, maybe take her to the cavern and so on. But if you are near the Forest of Boland and in Lancashire, do comment, tell us where to go. Lots of people on my other channel have been commenting and giving us some brilliant ideas. So I'm keeping a, a notebook full of ideas. We won't be able to do it all in a week, but we'll certainly go back if we love it. So, and I'm sure we will. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're going in August. Yeah, so, right, what else to talk about? I'm not gonna talk about any more works in progress because I've made no progress on anything else. Oh, it was a weird sound outside and I didn't know what it was, but it's a Sainsbury's delivery van reversing down the road. Uh, shall we talk about, so no, normally I've got a little section where I talk about patterns that have come to my attention that I want to share with you. But this time I've written in my very rough notes, patterns, plans and general creative dreaming. <laughs> so first of all, I've sent a link to a really lovely Instagram post. It was Karen, hi Karen, that sent me a link to RDP Knits. Uh, she had made some fingerless gloves with a chicken on them. And she doesn't sell that pattern, but it led me to find the chicken colour work um, mitten pattern that she does sell. It's called the Little Red Hen Mittens by RDP Knits. And uh, I would like to make them, it's got a Latvian braid, which I've never tried. I like doing colour work, especially for mittens, because it makes them super warm having all the strands carried behind. And I'd like to make them fingerless, so I think that would be fairly easy to do, just stopping a bit sooner and maybe doing just a little border. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that pattern because it was so cute. Um, I love making mittens and I don't make enough of them. I've, got, I've even got my own mitten pattern, which is free as a tutorial on this channel and I will link it underneath. It talks you through, for total beginners, how to sort of make a pair of really simple crochet mittens and I want to make more of those as gifts uh, you know for the upcoming Christmas uh, at the you know when I say upcoming I don't mean like it's around the corner but this Christmas in 2022 I'd love to make some as gifts and I just haven't got round to it yet but I do love making mittens I need to do more of that uh, yes yeah, so there's that pattern and then also, so right, I've got a ton of yarn here. So I've spoken before about wanting to make some kind of big granny square cr or just crochet cardigan thing that I can put on of an evening. And I wanted to do it with all of my yellow yarns because I have so many yellow yarns. So I did a big stash dive and I pulled out most, but not all of the yellow yarn that I have in my stash. Now this isn't all of it because some of the skeins are super precious and also some of them might be too, maybe I've missed them, but I know that there's more in there. So I'm gonna show you what I've pulled out for this. Okay, so here's all the yellow yarn I've got. Oh my word. Right, how are we gonna do this? Okay, uh, okay. So the first one is Banana Popsicle by Richard De Vries. There we go. Then I've got Marinated Yarns Lemon Ice. This is a big one, this is 150 grams. Uh, these are all fingering weight, by the way. Ooh, let's get that one before it escapes. Um, this was a gift from Susan. Most of these were gifts, by the way. Um, da, da, da. Yellow Sapphire by Kiwi Yarn. Is this coming out on focus? I'm not sure. Let me let me move a bit so I can make sure. Oh goodness! Oh no! Yarn claps. Okay, so this was a gift ages ago from my lovely friend Rachel, who is so Raimi. This is Elderflower Stitches, and the colour 
is lemon drizzle cake. Oh, it's so delicate and lovely. That's elderflower stitches. This one was a gift from Karen and it is Bell Yarn, Bell Art Fill in the colour Sundance. Really lovely pale yellow. And then I've got Leading Men Fiber Arts. This was a gift from Ruth in the colour Sunny Side Up. Oh, right, so this was for Marta. It must have been when we did the swap when, when I got that bag. Merciana's, oh, it's all in German. Oh, I think that's German. Anyway, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it's lovely. It's a lovely pale yellow. Then I've got a gorgeous green lampkin yarn, my lovely friend Suzanne at Green Lampkin Yarn. Uh, and this is the chicken thief. No, this can't go into it because this is this is this one I want to use for a specific chicken themed project. So although this is beautiful, it's not going into this project, even though it's yellow. Then I've got super squishy sock base in tangerine twist by Bigfoot Fibers, and I think I think this might have been from Ruth as well. That's lovely. It's got some nice oranges in there as well. And then from lovely Annette in beautiful Denmark, I have got wool. Oh, here goes the pronunciation, my lack of pronunciation skills. Wool <laughs> The Colours Beach House. There you go. How would you say that? The colour is Beach House and the ideal colour name for that, I feel. And then finally, I don't think I'm going to use this because this is such a precious skein of yarn. When I first started podcasting, I won um, a knit along. We were making mittens, stripy mittens, and it was a knit along run by Emma of Eldenwood Craft. And I'm pretty sure there was someone else was running it with her, but I can't remember off the top of my head who it was. And we made striped mittens according to Badagak. And I won, and I remember it was just so thrilling, and I won a skein of Lakeside Yarns in the colour Duckling. And this is special for all of those reasons, but also, in case you don't know, Lakeside Yarns was the original name for Lay Family Yarn. So I have got a super, super sort of original skein of yarn from the first kind of edition of lay family yarn so this is so soft and so precious so i think this needs to be used in a in a project of its own right so that's going over there with the chicken yarn but that still leaves me with one two three four five six seven eight full skeins one of which is 150 grams of yellow yarn in order to make whoop, in order to make my project. <laughs> oh, now hang on, then there's this one as well. That's nine, that's nine, 900 grams. So I am, you know, I've definitely, I think I've got enough, do you? And I have started, well, I started ages ago in our, and I will put it in the, a link to it in the description box. Um, I've got a bundle on Ravelry of crochet garments. And I've been adding to that things that I think might I might like for my, you know, this crochet cardigan granny square thing. And I've been looking on Instagram and Pinterest and I just feel so inspired by it. And just, I can't wait. My first love was crochet and I just can't wait to make this big, proper granny square cardigan. So I've got some saved. Where does it say? I saved some on Ravelry and on Pinterest. So let, so let me just sh shout some of them out that I've been saving and I'll put some pictures up on the screen. Okay, so one of them that I really liked is the Bloom Cardigan um, pattern, Bloom Cardigan Crochet pat Pattern. Okay, I've just been doing a bit of scrolling and it's not the Bloom Cardigan Crochet Pattern that's available on Etsy, that's a completely different one. So the pattern, I'll put a picture up on the screen of the one I'm looking at, it's really, I could probably just work it out to be honest. 
Um, it's a really lovely uh, granny filled cardigan. I don't know what the pattern is. I might have to try and do a Google image search to find it. And if I do find it, I'll put it on the screen. Um, so I really like the idea of that in all varying shades of yellow. That was one of the ones I really liked. And then I really like the cropped granny jacket pattern by Theodora Goes Wild. It's a really lovely pattern, but I think it's made in Aran weight yarn, but I'm wondering if I can just use it as a base and a, a, a starting point to get the shaping of something that I can wear. I really like the bobble edging on that one. So those were things that really um, inspired me. And then on Ravelry, as part of the ones that I've saved on my Ravelry bundle, the Granny Square Cardigan by uh, Leon Leonella Cavellos. Cavellos. I think that's a really nice one, but I think maybe the sleeves are a bit too um, wide for me. There's the Sedona sweater by uh, Tony Lipsy, but again, that's a, that's a sweater and not a cardigan. And then there is the diamond sweater, uh, which is a pattern by Krishna Varsani. And I really like this one. It's, it's a bit more unusual than the other ones. And I really like the deep V neck. I would probably, I, I even actually do quite like that cropped nature of it as well. So I've got lots of options. Actually looking at that one, I really like that. It's really nice. I can imagine doing that in just various shades of yellow. Ooh. It says it's made with Aran yarn again though, but maybe I could hold some double. Oh, you see, this is, this is what I mean. I keep going down these rabbit holes for this project. So I've made the start by gathering the yarn and now I just need to make some decisions about what I want to make. My camera is overheating and so am I, to be honest. So I'm going to take a little break and have a sip of my drink, but you won't notice. We'll just do a little transition and I will be back once my camera has cooled down. Okay, I think we've cooled down. I've only given it five minutes, so fingers crossed. Um, yeah, so I've just been feeling so inspired, just looking up all these images and pictures and really enjoying that feeling of just ideas floating about and how I might work that and what I'm gonna do. And I'm half tempted to just start even without the pattern and make it up as I go along, which isn't like me to be so frivolous <laughs> and out of control, but that's how I'm feeling at the moment. And then I was really inspired by, I spoke last time about this issue of Simply Crochet. My mum got me a subscription to Simply Crochet for my birthday. And I really liked, uh, well, I liked this front um, cover pattern, but when I went to have a look at it, I was gonna make it. But some of the, even just the gauge instructions were just so baffling that I had to abandon it. I was just like, I'm not sure I've got the headspace to work that out. And then the other pattern that I really liked in here was this one. And I, it, it really inspired me. It's a bit too baggy for my liking, but it really, um, it inspired me to want to get, I've got a lot of cotton. I'm very lucky I was sent a gift of a lot of cotton yarn. And I just want to try and wing something, just make something up as I go along, just make some kind of baggy throw on, uh, top for summer. We've got a hot tub where we're going in August so it'd be nice to maybe have something to fling on as we walk to and from the hot tub, something cotton to go with my swimming costume might be nice and I really fancy just making it up and I have no idea where to begin or how that would even work but I'm beginning to get annoyed with myself for not messing about and not experimenting and being creative because I used to be like that and now I'm not. I don't know why I got more careful as um as the years have gone by I feel I've entered this kind of frustrating creativity inspired phase where I'm just absolutely full of ideas and plans and things in my head that I really want to make and without with without the sort of ability to just get it out like I can't quite form the thoughts or grab the time and the the starting point for it. And it's a really, it's kind of a nice feeling, but it's also a really frustrating feeling. And then I got the latest issue of Simply Crochet. It arrived yesterday in the post. Uh, it is issue 125. And on the front cover was this jumper. And all over again, I was like, oh my goodness, not only do I want a llama, but I, sorry, that's an alpaca. I want an alpaca, 
but I also want to make this jumper, that's amazing. And I've definitely got the yarn in my stash to make that and I love it. So I've had a look at the pattern and the yarn quantities and I'm really, really tempted to give that a go. I think it would be so interesting to make. You couldn't get bored making that of all of those sections, could you? Amazing. And also, the month of August, we have our now traditional, it will be our second one, uh, family sort of uh, Christmas celebration in the summer. We still get together at Christmas, but when we missed Christmas because of COVID, we reinvented a new family celebration in summer and we called it Him in Peño Day. And the main theme of that day has somehow become flamingos. And there is a legendary <laughs> flamingo pattern in here. It's by Victoria Caris and it is Party in Pink. Don't think I'm going to get that made in time for this year's uh, Him in Peño Day. I did make a crocheted flamingo last year. Um, and it was a Kerry Lord pattern. So this is the flamingo that I made last year. Look at his feet. <laughs> So he'll be out as part of our decorations this year as well. I'll just actually I could sit him up here, come I? I could keep an eye on us. Don't don't drink my drink. There he is. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I really like that one. And also in here there was a really lovely giant uh, granny crochet cardigan. But I'd need a lot of the plain coloured yarn to do this. I suppose I could just stripe my yarns, but it's a lot. That is um, it's a duster cardigan by Cassie Ward. Really like that. But I think I'd get bored with this. I think I need lots of granny squares. But it's really lovely. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, so that is my patterns, plans and creative dreaming sort of waffle. Uh, and also talking about flamingos apparently. So what should we talk about next? What have I got on my very rough notes? Skillshare. I'm going to talk about Skillshare next. So basically, so I, I'm so excited about the class that I've just completed. Although even though I've completed the class, I haven't actually done the practical part of it. So Skillshare is sponsoring this video. Thank you, Skillshare. And it's an online learning community full of thousands of online creative uh, classes in as I have been discovering just about any creative subject you can possibly imagine from drawing, cooking, baking, plant growing, sewing, uh, crochet, knitting, clothes making, uh, mental health, um, meditation, mindfulness, journaling, photography, how to use various editing softwares, how to use social media. And as part of my collaboration with them, I've had free membership and I just, I'm, con I'm not sure how I'm going to live without it when I don't have it because I might just have to get it and extend it because I'm on there all the time. I've done a course in TikTok for work. I have done meditative doodling. I have done uh, drawing for mental health. I've done needlepoint and various other uh, lessons along the way but the one that I've been doing over the last two days I've just completed watching a class it's called Perfect Pasta al Pomodoro did you notice I went all kind of like attempting to do Italian then I shouldn't do that let's just do it with the, the uh, you know the South East London accent shall we Perfect Pasta al Pomodoro <laughs> with Nicoletta Grippo she is the head chef and owner of what well, Italian coming up La Scuola di Italy in and that wasn't me saying Italy in a funny accent it's Italy as in E-A-T-A-L-Y Italy it's her restaurant in New York City um, and I never realized so basically she talks you through how to make this really simple tomato and dried pasta dish she uses actual dried pasta as well I was going to say spaghetti but it's not it's a different type of pasta and I never knew I could learn so much about such a simple dish. Like, I have been basically committing crimes against pasta. I break spaghetti when I cook it. And apparently that should be, in her opinion, a crime punishable by jail time. <laughs> and I had no idea. 
here. I've been undersorting the water. I've been using the wrong type of canned tomatoes. Honestly, I in that, this short class on such a simple dish, I've learned so much on how to make a simple midweek meal that I know that everyone in my family will eat, um, taste and just be so much better. So I cannot, I'm gonna make it tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to making that for the family and sort of cooking along with her. And it was just so interesting. She's got another class as well on how to actually make fresh pasta. And I'm definitely going to do that as well. That is something I would really love to do. And she just makes it so clear and so interesting. And you don't feel bad about using dried pasta and you know canned tomatoes or a jar of passata or anything like that. It's just, it, oh, I just loved it. And so many little tips like keeping your crushed garlic under olive oil and things that probably many of you feel are simple and you already know, but I didn't. And I just, oh, I loved it. Anyway. Um, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box and in the pinned comment underneath will get a free month's trial of Skillshare. So you just got to click the link and go through this, uh, the, the process to uh, join and yeah, make sure you read all the terms and conditions and everything so you know what you're doing and how to cancel it if you want to and you get a full month and I'm sure you will be hooked like I am because I, I just love it. It is just such a rabbit hole for me of things to learn and I will let you know either on the screen or next time how my pasta al pomodoro <laughs> went. <laughs> so thank you Skillshare for that. And okay, I also wanted to talk about books and stuff because I, we all love talking about books, don't we? So I've finished physical books. Oh, I don't have it with me, it's downstairs. And the, uh, there's a reason why it's downstairs, so I shall tell you. I've just finished A Year in Cronenberg by Jeff Bunn. Without it in front of me, I'm pretty sure that's it from my memory. I really enjoyed it. It's very much, it was very much a year in Provence type thing. It was set out from January to December about a British couple who moved to Sweden and how they settle in. It was really good and I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed A Year in Provence when I read that and other um, sort of travel writing uh, or you know moving to other countries books but I really I really did enjoy it and I was trying to think about what to do with it next. I was going to give it to the charity shop or pass it on to someone and then I remembered there's something called book crossing so I thought I'd ask you lot has anyone ever tried book crossing? What's it like? Is it worth doing? Is it fun? Or is there an alternative to book crossing, which is equally fun, that I might like to try it with my finished book? Uh, I know that many of you usually come up with some brilliant ideas and suggestions, so let me know in the comments. Now that I've finished that book, I have moved on to, I was a bit daunted by this because it's so big. Uh, it's The Lollipop Shoes by Joanne Harris. It is the second book to follow up her Chocolat novel and I have borrowed this from my friend Suzanne who I mentioned earlier who is Green Lumpkin Yarns and I am really enjoy it. It's such, it's magical. The story is very much about magic and chocolate and food and France and just it's lovely and people and it's so well written and I'm doing quite well. I'm really making an effort to try and sit down and read not just at night because I keep falling asleep but trying to grab time in the afternoon when the girl, if the girls are doing something else to so just sit down for set a timer for 20 minutes and just get some reading done so I'm really enjoying this so far I have been oh I'm also still reading and nearly finished draw your day this was a birthday gift um, it is by Samantha Dion Baker and I am loving this I've noticed recently I've been doing a lot of reading about um, sketch journaling without actually doing sketch journaling. So I think what I'm going to do is set myself a little challenge of over the summer sketch journaling my summer. So from when the girls finish their, well Lily has already finished school but Phoebe finishes in a couple of weeks um, and sketch journaling my summer and maybe just set myself the challenge of doing that to get myself into the habit. Audiobook wise, my goodness me, do I get my money's worth out of Audible. Um, I finished Notes from a Small Island by Bill Bryson and I really enjoyed that and that was actually part of the free catalogue of books that they have which is really good. They have a, a number of books that are available for 
for free if you're a member. So, and all, you pay a monthly amount and then you get a credit, one credit for one book each month. So it works out quite well because by the time you maybe listen to a free one and maybe listen to a, a one that you bought, your credit has jumped up again and then you can buy another one and so on. So I finished um, Notes from a Small Island, which I read back in the day, uh, but it was really fun to listen to it and go back to that. I then read, uh, I then listened to Chickens, Mules and Two Old Fools by Victoria Tweed. I really enjoyed that story and she's got more in the series about an older couple, a retired couple from Britain who moved to Andalusia in Spain. I really enjoyed it, however, I found the narration a little bit irritating. It took me a while to decide if it was the narrator was Ginny Bond, she's a Shakespearean actress, and I, it took me a while to work out whether I was enjoying it because it was like being read to by a kindly primary school teacher, or whether it was irritating, and by the end it was just a bit too irritating for me. And I would love to read more of the story, but I think I would actually just like to read it rather than be read it because uh, it was the, it's the kind of book where you can then picture the landscape and so on. So I, I listened to that quite quickly. Then I moved on to a book that was me recommended by a few viewers of this channel, my other channel, and that was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. It was a wonderful book. I really, really loved it and it was made even better by the narration by uh, Carey Mulligan, who's a British actress. She was perfect for reading the book and I was so hooked that I read it, I read it, I listened to it so quickly. Uh, I've listened to it when I'm walking, in the car, to and from work, when I'm cooking dinner uh, and so on and I just loved it what a great book I can see myself listening to that again and I never think that about stories uh yeah I really enjoyed the midnight library really thought-provoking positive and yeah I don't it just leaves you with a happy feeling so I really enjoyed that I definitely read read or listen to more of Matt Haig's stuff and after that I just I moved on and then I just finished last night the, another one that was recommended by viewers, and that is The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by, um, I want to say Ro Rosie, no, not Rosie, Rachel Joyce, uh, by Rachel Joyce. And uh, that even better narration was narrated by Jim Broadbent, who I, you know, I know is a good actor, but can now totally 100% appreciate the talent that he has because he just brought the story and the characters and the emotion of the book alive. He was amazing. I couldn't imagine actually reading that book. He read it so perfectly and I really enjoyed it. It was a very touching story. There was a lot in it about walking, which I really appreciated because it's something that's a big thing in my life. And yeah, I'm not gonna say much more about it because you need to go on the journey with Harold and I'm gonna try and get Dan to listen to it. It's a gentle story and uh, yeah, at times frustrating and ultimately just really heartening. So I, I loved it. Probably one of the best books I've listened to this year and I've listened to a lot this year. I think I've listened to something like 12 audiobooks now this year. Um, yeah, so that is books and stuff. Oh, I also bought a book. I went out with my friend Sarah, who has the wonderful Yarn Mugs podcast. If, if you haven't checked out her channel, do, because she is so... She's a brilliant knitter and, and crocheter and she sews all her own clothes as well. Well, most of her own clothes. So we went out for one of our days where we go for tea and lunch and so on. I actually filmed part of it, a part of it for my uh, vlog on this little wonderful life, which I'll link underneath. And we went for a mooch around Waterstones, which is a wonderful bookshop. And I bought a copy of The Midwitch Cuckoos, uh, which I realise has been made into a sky... Um, series but I would like to read the book. I read the first few pages standing in the bookshop and it just completely drew me in. So I think I'm going to take this on holiday to read on holiday if I finish the lollipop shoes by then of course because that's quite a big book. This is quite a little book. Uh, yeah so that's the last book to mention. I also had a little bit of incoming stuff I wanted to show you. Uh, lovely Deborah all the way from California surprised us with some wonderful uh, sweets and things from the US which is always a source of much excitement with the girls. They are all gone now. 
um, and she also sent some lovely yarn. So uh, she sent two skeins of soft alpaca lace yarn from Hobby. Oh, it's getting really warm in here now. I can't wait to open the windows. <laughs> so it's 100% alpaca and 50 grams is 400 meters. So yeah, it's a lace weight one. So it's really lovely. And I've been, normally I have a bit of a problem with alpaca, but this feels okay. It feels okay. So I'll have to have a little think about some wonderful airy, lacy shawl type thing perhaps. So that's lovely. Does it say what the color is? Oh no, it's just got a number. It's color 14, in case you're interested. I would say that's mustard, would you? And then as well as a lovely letter, and the sleeve. She also sent two skeins, skeins, scones, <laughs> scones, of ruby and roses yarn, which I've never heard of, and the colour is Felix Felices. Look at that. Look at those speckles. Look at that gold colour. This is a very autumnal yarn, I think. I do have on Ravelry a bundle as well for two skein projects. And I've got quite a lot of yarns in two skeins, so I need to have a think about that. This is beautiful though, it's got that lovely twist. It says plump rose base two ply. And it's got, it's, I, this is the kind of thing I love to work with. It's got a wonderful, you see that twist in it. Isn't that lovely. So thank you, Deborah. I am, um, yeah, I really love this. And she also sent, with it, she sent some gorgeous uh, little stitch markers on a little star key ring. I've got a star key ring like this. This is silver, but I've got a gold one on my car keys. No, on my house keys. Uh, and they're so useful and it makes it really handy to find my door keys. So I might take this and put it on my car keys. <laughs> and she's got some lovely little stitch markers on there. And then she sent me, I got very excited about this when I opened the box on my vlog. Look at these snips. They are super snips, small, sharp safe they've got a little um rubber casing which is attached you can't lose it and this but tiny <laughs> look they're so cute and they're yellow which is my favorite color in case you hadn't guessed and a little yellow and see-through measuring tape and again you can have hours of fun <laughs> so thank you deborah uh, for that very generous and very thoughtful gift. It was really lovely to find that in my in my post box, so thank you. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking at you, let my camera cool down, because it's getting all hot again, um, and move on to the final bits. And finally, I just wanted to say, uh, it took me forever to send Danielle's prize for the blanket make along, but it is now been sent. It should be there. Hopefully it'll be there. I sent it quite a while ago now. And Elaine, your prize for the dodgy bag mail has been sent and the other prize as well for, oh, I saw your post on Instagram just the other day and I can't remember, um, your your Instagram name. I'll put it on the screen. Um, yeah, so oh, I think she's definitely received hers. So yeah, all the prizes have now been sent out. I also wanted to thank particularly, particularly Samantha and in Inaka, which I'm probably saying that wrong, which is funny because I'm about to talk about pronunciations again, um, for getting in touch to tell me the pronunciation of the Etsy shop that I spoke about last time. It was a shop based in the Netherlands. And I'm very lucky that I have viewers from a number of countries that speak different languages. And they both got in touch to tell me how to pronounce it. Right, I just had to change my battery. So hopefully I haven't missed with the setup too much. Uh, what was I saying? Yes, so uh, the pronunciation. So Samantha, and Inika, oh, I hope I'm saying your name right, uh, got in touch. So it is pronounced, hang on, I'm gonna have to have a look <laughs> at, the, at the thing. Fliegende Hollander. Fliegende Hollander, and I think it means the Flying Dutchman. I think that's what it means. And that's the name of the Etsy shop, um, which I spoke about last time. So Samantha and Inika, it was, and Inika actually, gave me a voice note so it was wonderful to hear it said properly and it was it yeah thank you so much both of you for um 
doing that and I just love learning about stuff like that with you know we are we are not famous are we British people for being brilliant at other <laughs> European languages whereas the rest of Europe seem to be absolutely everybody speaks English puts us to shame uh, right, have I got anything else to cover? Don't forget, I'm on Instagram, sorry, as Ali, but I've also started a new Instagram account called Alison Wondersland, which I still think is my most genius idea that I've ever had. <laughs> it's all about walking, and I make lots of reels. I've been learning about making reels uh, uh, of my walks that I do around where I live or work. So don't forget to go and follow me there. And if you want more content from me, I usually release a video every Monday or Tuesday over on This Little Wonderful Life. I haven't filmed anything for this week though. So will I or won't I? Who knows? It's been a very busy couple of weeks with the girls finishing school and exams and so on. So let's see what happens. I will see you next time. Um, hopefully with a finished corner to corner crochet blanket and lots more things besides. And it might be a little while because we're about to enter the school holidays so if you don't see a podcast from me you might see some other videos from me but definitely keep an eye on this little wonderful life because i'll definitely be doing lots of vlogs of our summer which will include by the way a couple of days ago i booked for us to go to a country park here in kent and learn for two hours to do paddle boarding <laughs> what can go wrong what can go wrong so i will definitely be vlogging about that anyway until next time happy knitting happy crocheting and i'll see you again very soon bye